Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. Dr. Catherine Hamlin has been described by the New York Times as the Mother Teresa of our age. For many years, this gallant woman labored alongside her husband in Ethiopia. She performed more than 25,000 surgeries. She gave dignity and hope to women whose lives had been shattered by the complications of childbirth. Over a period of time, this woman who had helped so many developed a chronic cough. The prognosis was not good. X-rays showed a lesion on her lung. Before treatment began, however, Dr. Hamlin attended a prayer service when an unknown woman put her hand on her shoulder and prayed that her lungs would be healed. After the prayer, Dr. Hamlin turned to the stranger, a person who did not know her, and asked the obvious question, How do you know I had anything the matter with my lungs? The woman replied she had been prompted by the Holy Spirit to pray for her. Then Dr. Hamlin revealed that a tumor had been discovered. Dr. Hamlin was admitted to London's Hammersmith Hospital. A biopsy was scheduled. The head of the radiology department ordered a CAT scan to confirm the diagnosis. Dr. Hamlin told about lying in the cylinder where the CAT scan was done. She saw the doctors in deep discussion huddled over the data which had been gleaned. Then the radiologist initiated the conversation, saying, I'm very sorry. But the apology turned to joy as he continued, But we can't find anything the matter with your lungs. Dr. Hamlin returned to her room, got dressed, and walked out of the hospital. Dr. Hamlin, a surgeon herself, could never be convinced that prayer was not the agency that God used to bring healing to her lungs. Her skeptical friend said, Well, perhaps that woman heard you coughing. No, she would respond, I had not coughed at all. There was no way she could know what my condition was. But God doesn't do that sort of thing anymore, some would say. The natural mind can never fully fathom how the hand of God touches some with healing, but extends his grace to others. And what God has not revealed, neither can I explain. But the fact that God is sovereign, and he does what he chooses to do, brings glory to his name. In telling a friend of this incident, I commented, You know, we often put God in a box saying, He doesn't do that sort of thing anymore. Yes, she commented, but it's a pretty box. She's right. I couldn't help thinking of the beautiful floral patterns of the polished oak, which softens the harshness of caskets holding the body of someone you love. Whatever you do, friend, don't put God in a pretty box, adorning it with tears or flowers. He's alive. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I, for one, am glad that I don't have to explain why God chooses to do some things and chooses not to do other things. Long ago, Jeremiah cried out, Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved, for you are the one I praise. I'm Harold Sala, and if today's commentary has spoken to your heart, I'd suggest that you find a copy of my book, What You Need to Know About Healing. In this book, I explain that God is still in the business of healing, and Jesus Christ, his Son, is still the great physician. The good news is that God is not in a box, even a pretty one, and he who created us has power over our lives to bring help, healing, and redemption. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines.